So I'm Joe Lee. I'm, I've been an animal communicator in Boulder for, I think, about 18 years now. And I also teach animal communication. Um, I think I'm the best job in the world. Um, I really still enjoy my work very much. It's a great um, gift to me to talk with animals and to be privileged to uh, allow them to, for me to be their interpreter is often how I like to see it. And other than tell the animals that, that um, I'm, I'm here to help you speak to your person. That's really, that's my job. And I take great joy in doing that. Um, I think that's all you need to know about me. So I would like for everybody who wants to introduce yourself, please feel free. Um, and that's both people who are online and also people in person. Um, what I'm curious is if there's anything in particular you wanted to learn from me, if there was a reason why you came that is um, that you wanted to want to see, you want to share with me. And if there's not, that's fine too. So would anybody like to share? We'll we'll start with the in-person people. And yeah. <laughs> uh, what is your name? Kayla. Kayla. Hello everyone. So it was really funny because on my way here before I even got out of my neighborhood, I came into this very open, just wanting to being open to whatever it was. But um, I stopped because there was a little dog that ran across the road, obviously had been um, uh, on the streets for a while. The little sweater was ripped and its paw was really hurting. And I chased it around for probably, I don't know, like 10 minutes and it would not let me near it. <laughs> and so I'm like, well, I guess that's what I need to learn tonight. Because <laughs> it was just growling and growling and I didn't know how to communicate to the dog that I was exactly. safe. So, and sometimes when an, when an animal is lost, they go back into the mode and really there's not a lot of them because they can't really, but like their, their brain, which is into survival, they're just not, able actually to hear or trust. So it could be that there was nothing possibly you could do. But what I do with that is I call and I work with a lot of um, dogs. And so I just ask the divine mother to come to the dog that Kate Kaylin, that Kaylin saw and help that dog find someone that will help them find them. Yes, that's what we will do. And we we'll can just all, all hold that intention, really, uh, for tonight, because it's a tragic, tragic yeah. thing. And um, so all of us just saying hello to that dog and uh, helping it to, um, yeah. Yeah. So, thank you. Yeah. Speak up, please. Hi, Steve. Um, I always just had a close connection with animals. And this was of interest. Hi, uh, Devon. And I didn't actually come here with any questions or anything, but when you said what you said, I thought, you know, I've, I've been curious if my cat has is a, a soul from another pet that I've had in a lifetime. Uh -huh. I know we have a really deep connection. We've known yes. each other lifetimes. Yes. But is is he actually in right. 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 I know what yeah. you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Reincarnated into yeah. his body. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a question that he, animal communicators get. Yeah. Yes. yeah, and he came to me. Uh -huh. I mean, I had tried another cat and, and it didn't work out and I needed to get that cat back. Uh -huh. yeah. And then I just kind of put it out there and waited. I don't know, maybe it was six, seven months and then he right. showed up. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Well, it would, we probably won't answer that tonight. 
but it is a question that animal communicators often yeah. have addressed. So that's a good question. I'm Mary. I just mostly have interest in you. I have, okay. I have a couple dogs. Great. I just wonder if there's a way to communicate with them better or to understand them better. Yes. We will talk. We will talk about how you can communicate with them and how they can communicate with you. Okay. My name is Shelley, and um, I think I want you to go help that me with a sick pet. And she was spot on. And more recently, she helped us with the past. That. And um, we did a lot of other work together, too, that didn't involve pets. So <laughs> I just love Jolie. She's so oh, kind Shelley. and modest because she has so many talents. I've always wanted to check out more of animal communication. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Of course. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Bodra. And I have two cats, a boy and a girl. Okay. And um, the, I, I kind of made the boy alpha alpha uh -huh. um, because the girl was kind of bossing him around. And he's actually part Maine Coon, part Angora, so he's, he's really big. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. really big. He's very sweet. But now he chases her around. He's a guy and he wants to be, mm -hmm. kind of wants to know her. And she's like, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. And I often end up yelling at him. Yeah. And I know he gets his feelings hurt. And then I have to call him over and like try and make it nice for him and tell him, please don't chase her. Please don't, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I know they love me and I understand, you know, Boo and I, the girl, actually, she will talk to me. Uh huh. You know, and I'll say, Do you want to go outside? And she'll, you know, whatever. But um, I, I think I understand them, but I want them, I want to try and, you know, try and get them to get along. Better. Of course, of course. And, um, yeah. and for him to understand that when, you know, he's scaring her and she's yeah. spitting and hissing and yeah, feels yeah. trapped, yeah, yeah. then I'm going to step in. Of and course. I don't want him to feel like I'm, yeah, like yeah. mom's yeah. on me and, you right. know, like right. that. So that's, you know. Yeah. Very good. That that can be a challenging. So go ahead. Uh, my name is Sheila, and this is my sister. And I just have a great love for dogs in particular. I just feel an affinity towards them. And I have a little old dog now. He's old and he has dementia, and it's mm -hmm. kind of troublesome. Sometimes it looks like he gets possessed, where he's so angry, and mm -hmm. and I can't comfort him. Disturbs me, you oh, know. Absolutely. So he just, and it's yeah. not always, but it just gets so worked up and angry, and oh. it started growling. And I feel like it's kind of that survival thing, because uh -huh. you know, he was uh -huh. when I got him, and he came to to me. He was on the streets in New oh. Mexico, and then so he was a scrappy little guy. And he's yeah. always been really scrappy, and yeah. he has this rule like, "Don't mess with me." Yeah. Now everything is like yeah. he perceives as messy. Yeah, and I don't know if I can get through to him. Sometimes I do. Yeah, with dementia, it's tough because it it's it's it is kind of like with the the dog that's lost. Yeah, yeah. Is that they can't really hear you? They, you know, it kind of can't. Com, com, what do I want to say it doesn't Penetrate. compute. Yeah, it doesn't compute. You know, it and take so it in. yeah, because they're kind of things are kind of disconnected somehow. They're you know with their normal life. So, Somebody. But we'll see if. Um, we'll see. Maybe something will come up that you'll yeah, get an insight. Knows, but exactly. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm Sandy, and I've known Jolie a long time. I think probably we met at the Humane Society. Oh, it's I forgot where we met. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we were both volunteering. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, it's very nice to have everybody say hi. Is there anybody who would like to say hi online? Let's try this. <laughs> Hi. Hi. We're, John. We're John and Kitty, and we have a, a new dog. He, uh, he's been with, we fostered him, but he's been with us for about four months. One day. And uh, let me see if I can show him to you. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Beagle. <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he's a beagle, but he might be Beagle Bassett. He's got, he's got a real big, long body. Beagle anyway, Bassett, I love it. Yeah, a beautiful voice. 
But oh. uh, he is uh, reactive with other dogs. And otherwise, he somebody took a lot of time training him. He's absolutely fantastic in the yeah. house. Thanks yeah. to him. He'd only been with us for three weeks. He would, and, you know, people sitting on the floor with plates, plates of food, and he wouldn't touch it. And he is wow. really a food hound. So wow. anyway, anyway, though, uh, the thing that we'd really like to do for him is find a way to comfort him with respect to other dogs. He's very reactive for, with yes. other dogs. Yes. And uh, we've heard that he that he's a resource guarder also with other uh -huh. dogs. We've never had him, another dog in the house. So we don't know. Right. But we're hoping, you know, we've been working with him, training yeah. like, but if we could somehow uh, understand better what this I mean, he, right. he encounter a dog out at the park or something, and yeah. he bays and he lunges and I yes, mean, yes, wags yes. his tail, but he definitely is having some yes. sort of a reaction that we don't exactly. understand. Yeah, and it can be various things. Uh, sometimes dogs that have been chained up in a backyard, uh, and you could talk with a trainer about this and they'd probably be able to tell you, but a dog that's been chained up and wants to engage with other dogs but wasn't able to can have that kind of, yeah, yeah, I want to play, I want to, you know, and it can, it actually, I knew one dog, and he had been chained up for three years and it was a lifelong thing. There are people really never kind of got beyond that, but it got better, you know, over time. The other thing is a fear aggression. And so it can look like if, um, they're afraid it can look like they want to play, but it actually is fueled by uh, fear that then they become aggressive. And that's actually a more serious issue that um, once a fear has turned into aggression, uh, it can be very difficult to actually reverse that. So yeah. that's my experience. So those are two things you can kind of check out and right. see which one's kind of, kind of uh, guiding that. Thank you. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, I would like to talk a little bit about um, why is it, I guess I'm going to ask you guys, I'm not going to talk. Why is it that when we see an animal that we stop in our tracks? The, why is it we stop our car to find, you know, to help save a lost, a lost dog? What, what is it about, you know, seeing a hawk in the sky that we just, we're mesmerized? What, is, what are the qualities of animals that engage with us so very deeply and really kind of across the board? It's just kind of a human thing. Anybody have qualities? Yes. I think it's their innocence or purity of heart. Innocence and purity of heart. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Anybody else? <laughs> the sisters. <laughs> the sisters that you said, yes. I, I would call it organic innocence. Yeah. Organic innocence. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Yes, yes. yes. What I was saying with children, too. Yeah, yes. exactly. Uh, right, exactly. Animals and kids. Any other quality you can think of along the same lines? Just that pure, yes, it's captivating enough to us to be so wrapped up in our mind world that it seems right. so it's just pure being. Yes, gets us out of our mind and into that, that essence that's I close think, to our spirit. Yeah, I yes. think that um, the fact that they are much more, this along the lines of what you were saying, they're much more um, instinctual than yes. we are. Yes. And we've lost a lot of that, or we haven't lost it, we just don't pay attention to it. <laughs> you know, um, in, in dream work, um, the, uh, you know, an animal in a dream represents some aspect of the dreamer's instinctual nature. Ah, that makes sense. And yes. if it's a beloved pet, mm -hmm. then it also represents unconditional love. Unconditional love. Yeah. That is... And if it's a wild animal, then it represents whatever characteristics the dreamer associates with that animal. With that animal. Mm -hmm. well, we're going to be doing wild animals here ah. in a little bit tonight. So, cool. yes, mm -hmm. yes. 
So, yeah, so unconditional love, purity, anything else? Yes. Well, I, I would say also loyalty. Loyalty, and, of course. And um, kind of what you were talking about, you were labeling as instinctual, but they're in the present. Present um, time. They, um, yes. And that's why, too, when I yell at Odie, he, he's able to forgive me. Yes. You know, because he's, he's moving on to being in the present. So yeah. Yeah, I think they're a great um, uh, model for that because absolutely, and and maybe that is the instinctive part or whatever. But yes, they they are present from moment to moment. They are present from moment to moment. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't know how to put it to words what I feel. Yeah, but when you connect, um, like make direct eye contact with an animal, it's much different than with a human because I feel like there's a lot less judgment and you know and it's yes. so it's just so like i'm connecting with your soul one-on-one -on -one, yes. and it's right. so much easier to tap into that like right away yes. i feel for me at least sure sure, sure, <laughs> sure. yes that there's that uh that kind of soul connection mm -hmm. yeah with, yeah the, the moment of the, that spirit to spirit mm -hmm. yes. yeah so these are all qualities the and more qualities that when you want to communicate with an animal, you can become that quality, okay? And we're gonna practice this a little bit. So the more you can reflect that to them, these qualities, so that I'm, I'm loyal, I'm, I'm, I'm here in present time, I'm right here. You know, I'm spirit to spirit, soul to soul. I'm, I'm innocent and pure. Uh, unconditionally loving. I am holding these qualities. The animal is going to be more open to you. They're going to see you. Okay. So that's the first thing we're going to do is practice setting our energy at being animal friendly is what I call it. So let's go ahead and go within and we're going to practice this. I also want to say to everybody that uh, if you can see me, everything's fine. I'm going to show you a picture in a minute. And um, so if you need, well, you don't have to see the picture. I'm going to say the name as well. And you can read without a picture. But if you want to see the picture, you may want to set your computer so you can see it. Okay. So let's, let's all go within and close your eyes. And also people on the phone or people on, online, um, if you'd have a pen and paper handy, that would be helpful as well. And so I told you to get a pen and paper handy and now I'm asking you to close your eyes. And <laughs> you guys can multitask, right? <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So when you're ready, go ahead and close your eyes. And I'd like you just uh, to just kind of notice what's going on with you. And whatever's going on with you internally is great. And so just be, um, be present with yourself and honor whatever is uh, happening within you as you close your eyes. We're going to do a little exercise called grounding. And this is a very helpful exercise. Animals in general are fairly grounded. Not all animals by any means, but um, in general, they're much more grounded than we are. And so grounding also helps us, helps the animal uh, see us more. So to ground, just imagine there's an energetic connection between the base of your spine and the center of the earth. And you just imagine that that happens. And you can um, allow this energetic connection like a beam of light. I'd like you to expand it so it's as wide as your hips and it's a tube. And made out of some material. It could be a tree trunk. It could be a piece of fabric. It could be made out of feathers. It could be made out of literally anything. As long as it's a tube. So it's hollow in the middle and it's attached at your hips. This is what's called a grounding cord. And 
for humans, it's not a really common thing. Some people are naturally grounded. Most of us aren't. And so learning to ground and practicing grounding. Animals can see you more because when you're really grounded, then you show up more as a spirit in your body. And then that soul to soul connection is easier because the animal can see you. And also they're more grounded often than, than we are. So they appreciate being grounded. So grounding is the first thing. You can also say hello to your aura around you. Everybody has an aura. And an aura is an energy field that's around you in the shape of an egg. And it's, for, it varies from person to person, but it's anywhere from like a foot to three feet away from your body on all sides. It's below your feet, above your head, front and back, side to side. And just say hello to your aura, because animals have auras too. Trees have auras. Everything's got an aura that has life force in it. And saying hello to your aura, and you can play with the size a little bit. You want to be sitting right in the middle of it. You want it to cover you on all sides. And you can imagine it gets a little bigger. See how that feels. Imagine it gets a little smaller. See how that feels. And it's your aura. So you can do anything you want with it. You just think it. And it does what you request. It's fun to turn your aura a color. So I'd like you to think of a color you would like your aura. And that would be any color in the rainbow, or really any color except white or black or brown. Or you could even set it brown if you want. But rainbow colors are fun. You can have sparkles, you can have polka dots, you can have stripes, you can set your, again, this is your aura. You can set it exactly as you want, in any way you want. And again, when you set it at a color, the animal is able to see you better. Your aura isn't so gunked up because, you know, say you just came from Costco with all those people. And your aura has all kinds of other people's funky stuff in it. And that's just normal. It's normal to have a funky aura. Animals tend not to have funky auras like we do. So setting your aura to color helps everything else kind of drain out. Set it at a color. Everybody else's energy goes down the grounding form. And again, they can see you better. So these are just some uh, fun things to play around with. Now, with the color, whatever color your aura is, I'd like you to set it at one or more animal-friendly vibrations. So we talked about the vibration of innocence, the vibration of soul essence, the vibration of unconditional love, the vibration of loyalty. Um, Kaylin, you had another one. Um, but just come up with one or two or three. Vibrations that you just want to sit at animal friendly vibrations. So you set your aura to color and then you set it. I'll, I'll tell you another one that I really love and that, well, there are two more. I really like, I'll just mention playfulness. You set your aura of playfulness and a lot of animals are going to be really interested in you because humans tend to be way serious. We just are, and we especially we want to talk with them. We get really serious. So setting your uh, aura at playfulness, then they, they're more interested in listening to you because it sounds like more fun. The other one is serenity, that whatever's going on, you just set your aura at serenity, calmness. And again, animals really tend to appreciate that. So just choose. I say one or two or three. Notice how you're feeling right now. You're grounded. Said hello to your aura. Got your aura to color. Animal friendly vibration. How do you feel in your body right now? You feel any different than when you walked in? You may. You may not. 
but it's sometimes just nice to notice. So these are tools that I practice before every animal communication session. And so I'd like you, the last thing is to intend that that color that your aura is actually fills your body and your whole body, your chakras, if you know what they are, and your aura all vibrates at that color. And your entire body and energy field becomes that color and you fill in with that color at those vibrations. Notice how that feels. And then when you're ready, you can come out. And open your eyes. Does anybody have questions, comments about how that exercise was? No? I take it it was good. Yes, it was lovely. <laughs> no complaints. Okay. Well, so communicating with animals, it's very simple. There are a number of ways that you can receive information from animals. And I like to develop all of them. So there are four primary ways of knowing. There are more than that, but four primary ways of receiving information. One is seeing information. That's called clair clairvoyant information. So seeing, you actually see pictures. Animals are very good at reading our pictures. And let me tell you, we are showing them pictures all the time. So showing a picture is a mental picture. So say if you think of a tree. You think of a tree, you probably get an image of a tree in your mind. Yes? That's a mental picture. That's, what, that's how animals learn from us. That's how they get what's going on. They're reading our pictures. So say if we're on the phone and we're talking about whatever, you know, and you don't even try to do it. You, you're showing those mental pictures as you're talking. And the animal, if they're interested in what's going on, they're reading those mental pictures. Oh, she's talking about whatever, you know, who knows how they interpret them. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that's what they're reading is those mental pictures. So for us, so animals are really good at when we ask them a question, since they're reading our pictures all the time, they're really good at showing us a picture. They have the ability to show pictures as well. And so when you ask them a question, you may get a picture. And that's a really easy way to communicate is to show each other pictures. Um, that's clairvoyant. There's also clairaudient, listening, hearing. And so you may actually hear what an animal is saying. Okay? And, and everybody has a different sort of um, kind of go-to where they receive information easily. So none is better or worse. But naturally, some people may have more clairaudient information. They may just hear stuff. A lot of animal communicators um, hear what an animal has to say. Um, so that's the second one. The third one is, uh, it's called clairsentience. It's feeling. You feel it. And that was my strongest one. Uh, I just grew up. I always knew what an animal was feeling. It was just, I thought everybody did. So that was my strongest way of getting information. Um, and the fourth one is just knowing. You just know. You can't say how you know, why you know. You just know with certainty. You may have doubts about it, but you still know. And that actually was my strongest way. And that's kind of the hardest way because it's hard to trust that because you're like, why would I be thinking that? <laughs> why would I, you know, base anything on that? But knowingness is a very powerful way of receiving information, and it's, um, it, that's worth exploring as well. So it, kind of, it, it seems kind of close to the sentient feeling. You know, it's, you feeling. When you have a feeling, the clear sentient often comes in more at the second chakra, the fourth chakra, okay? So second chakra is more in your lower belly, fourth chakra is uh, in your heart space, and you pointed to your heart, so you have a feeling, right? It's more in the body. Knowing this information actually comes through your eighth chakra. 
So it's soul information. And so it's kind of like a download. It's like, you know, your eighth chakra has all the information. You know, it sits about two feet above your head. It has all your soul information. It has tons of information. And it just comes in. And you just know. Um, so receiving information. We're going to practice here in a minute. Um, when you, and I'm going to have questions. We have a, an animal we're going to be reading. And um, I'm going to show the picture. And then I've got some questions we're going to be asking him. And all you need to do is to stay within your space, you know, stay within your aura, stay, don't go to the dog. You know, we're not going to go to the dog to get the information. The dog is coming to us. And so it's like you're at a movie theater and you're just waiting for the show to start, right? And so you ask the question and then the information will come to you. And all you need to do is be patient and wait. And be aware that you may receive this information. You don't know how you're going to receive it. Because every animal also has the way they communicate that is different from animal to animal. So it's kind of like he's going to need to tune in to each of us, and we're going to need to tune in to him. And it can take a little bit. Sometimes, boom, it's right there, and you get lots of information. And other times, it's like you have to tweak it a little bit. Like they had to tweak the computer a little bit. You know, you've got to play with things a little bit to get them to where it's like, oh, yeah, right there. Oh, oh, he's speaking to me. Oh, I'm going to open my clear audience. I think he, he's, uh, he's speaking rather than showing pictures or maybe a combination of all. So all you need to do is to wait, be patient and wait for the information to come. Okay? So there's no effort in it. In fact, I'll go on, go as far as to say it's right brain. So people that know left brain and right brain, the left brain cannot understand animal communication if it's life dependent on it, because it's all logic. And animal communication is all right brain. It's all right brain. There's nothing to understand about animal communication. It's all intuition. It's all spirit. It's ununderstandable. So that's why it's important just to sit and wait and let the right brain do whatever it does so that that information can show up. So you just need to be patient and chill, okay? All right, so I'm gonna show the picture. This is Riley. And some of you know Riley. Barbara, I know you know Riley. I'm gonna show here. So this is Riley. Oh, here, I'm gonna pass this around so you guys can see Riley, thank you. This is our dear, dear little Riley. Okay, so if anybody, hopefully everybody online. I, mean, I actually never met Riley, but I know Riley. <laughs> but you know him because you know Jeannie. Oh, because I know Jeannie and we talk. Of course. All the time. Of course. Yes. Well, there he is. Oh my gosh. There you see. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh yay. Okay, and I'm not going to say a word about Riley. I'm not going to say anything about him because I want you all to receive your information. So, oh, I can pass this around the other way. You saw him, Nicole, is that right? Now, I'm sorry. Can, can you get like a input at any time? Sorry. Yes. Cause, yes. Because I think Odie just told me something. Oh, absolutely. Like here you are. Here you are at an animal communication thing. The, the, the vibes are set for animal communication. And the, it's very common that animals come, come in and say, oh, by the way, you're just sitting there open to communication. So uh, I've, got a, I've got something I'd like to share with you. So, yeah. So validate yourself for that. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yes. Especially if we're projecting pictures all the time, you know. Yes. Um, yes. And they're picking it up. Exactly. They are reading. There, really, there's very little we need to, well, there are a few things that we need to do to communicate with them. I'll just say that, well, no, I want to read Riley first, but remind me to talk about 
that's what, what we can do to help. Okay, so we're gonna go back with him and find our space, find our, spend too much time. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, we're gonna go back with him. You can close your eyes. So, all right, so um, you're just going to find that same space, your space where you're grounded, your aura's around you, it's a color, it's set at an animal-friendly vibration. You're ready to talk to an animal. You're like an animal. You're matching their energy. And I'm also going to ask you to be in the center of your head. And that's just right behind your forehead. It's what people call the third eye. You don't need to know anything about that. But just be right behind your forehead, a little bit above your eyebrows. Just very there in the center of your head. It just makes it easier to read and receive information from there. And just breathe and relax because there's nothing for you to do. Absolutely nothing except be open and wait. So I'm going to say his name three times, and that's going to call him in. Okay? So, and he knows. We've been, we've been preparing for a while. <laughs> Riley, Riley, Riley. And the first thing that's nice to do is to send a hello to him from your heart. Just say, hi, Riley. I'd like to talk with you tonight. You may get a feeling. You may see his picture, which is fine to, you know, focus on the picture. That's him. And just say, I'd, I'd like to talk with you. The first thing we're going to ask, and you can see him as a, um, you know, in his body, you're going to get a sense of his personality. So you're tuning into him somehow. You're looking at his picture. The picture could actually become animated. That's often what happens. You could just ask him to animate that picture and to start showing you stuff, communicating in some way. As far as his personality, would you say your sense is that he's more serious or more playful? Just being open to him. Would you say he's a more reserved dog or he's a more open and gregarious dog? Would you say he's a happy dog or maybe more melancholic? And you may actually get some other information about what his personality is like, but I'm just going to let you kind of connect with him on, your, on his personality, see what you get. You may just get one word. But hopefully you have some little sense, even if it's just an inkling. So just make a mental note of how you're perceiving his personality.
And then we're going to ask him the question of, Riley, what is important to you in your life? Dogs love to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> you can ask questions mentally, you know, telepathically. Sometimes you get information you don't know what it means. So you can talk with him. Ask for more information, ask for clarification. What is important to you in your life? Okay, so you can make a mental note of that. Now we're going to ask an open-ended question. So this is where Riley, what do you want to say? This is your chance. What's on your mind? Again, if you don't understand, ask questions, ask for clarification. Okay, so make a mental note of that, what he wanted to say. And now we have two specific questions. One is, do you like going to the dog park? So this is what you get in an animal communication session. There, People want to know what's working and what's not. Do you like, Riley, going to the dog park? And if yes, why? And if no, why? And then make a mental note of that. I'll go back over these questions later. And then the final question is, why do you bark so much? <laughs> we also want to validate him that he's barking much less than he used to. But why do you still bark a lot? Okay, so you're welcome to stay in meditation if you want to continue talking with him. For people that have the answers to your questions, I'd like you to immediately write them all down. And I'll go over the questions again. It's just that we forget. We went over quite a few things. What is your personality? We well, said a hello from your heart. Maybe there was some response there. You said hello from your heart. Then we asked for his personality. Serious, playful, open, reserved, happy, sad. And then what is important to you in your life?
And then the third question was, what do you want to say? An open-ended question, which is often how I start animal communication sessions, bringing it up to them. What do you want to say? And then we asked if he liked the dog park. And then we asked, why do you bark? So write things down even if you don't understand them, especially if you don't understand them. Even if it's unusual, especially if it's unusual. Even if it was a little wisp, like I'm not even sure, but it might have been. Write it down. It's all information. And I also want you to just, I mean, go ahead and write what you want to write, but also as you're writing and thinking about the information you received, how did you receive the information? You may have received it in multiple ways, or you may have received it primarily one way. How did it naturally come to you? What gift were you using to receive it? Does that make sense? And write that down as well. How you received it. That doesn't mean you'll receive it the same from another animal, but for this animal, how was that connection made? Which of your senses were you exercising? Your spiritual sense. Okay, looks like the pens are resting. So I think we'll go ahead and start. I would like for anybody who would like to share, I don't know, if, we probably won't have time for everybody to share, um, but people that would like to share, go ahead. And if anybody would like to unmute yourselves, online, go ahead, um, and we're going to see what Riley had to say. So who would like to go first? Yes. And okay. please speak up. Hi, I got this, um, I'm reading it even before you said say hi to him, I had already done that. Yes. And I got this picture of him standing with his tail wagging madly. Like it, it came up and then, and then, um, so I got friendly, energetic, happy, playful, loving, interested. Interested. Was, yeah. Yes. Like, hi, I, I, I think I heard him say, hi, 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 hi. You know, like, <laughs> yes. And, and wow. so he's been waiting all week. Yes. <laughs> and, and then, um, what's important, he said, communicating, going for walks, having fun. Mm -hmm. Those those were the things that I heard him say. And there then, what do you want to say? He said, "I'm happy, and I like most people, and I like to talk." <laughs> and, and I thought, oh, "Okay, am I am I making this up?" But everybody thinks that it there was something going on with the the like I yeah. was in a certain zone, and I could feel something going on in the front of yes. my head. Yeah. Um, he said about the dog part. 
yes, exclamation point. Yes. But sometimes other dogs get aggressive and that I don't like. Sure. And then why do you like to bark? I like to talk. I have a lot to say. <laughs> I'm protecting my home and the people in it. Yes. Very so good. Is Riley your dog? Riley is not my dog. Riley is Jeannie's dog. And Jeannie is online. Jeannie, do you want to say hi? You'll have to unmute yourself. Jeannie's hi. Right. Yeah, I did. And I'm sorry, what is your name? Who just Jeannie? Yeah, no, what is can you hear Jolie. me? Jeannie. Yeah, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, good. Do you hear oh, I'm sorry, what is that about Riley? Yes, I did. And what what is the gal's name who just said that? She, the woman's name? Badra. Yeah. Badra. Badra. And we're Badra. in trouble so here. Badra, you, yeah, yeah. So Badra, you're pretty spot on. She says spot. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. Go spot ahead. on with him. We yes. just went to the dog park and he loves it, but we did have a little interaction with one dog and you know, you're right. He doesn't like it. Most dogs wouldn't. Um, and he is very protective of me and has to bark at really anything that passes by the front door, which is lovely, but it's also very annoying. Um, but you were, you were really good, Audra. He is a very happy. So thank you. Yes. So thank you. Yes. So that's... His, his person. What what else? He's a multifaceted dog, too. Who else wants to share? Mine was completely opposite of okay, that. Okay, so go ahead. Go ahead and say I, what. Well, what it I doesn't matter. Like, I was like, am I just projecting my feelings onto this dog? Mm -hmm. go, 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 go ahead and say I don't want to share. Because <laughs> if that's the dog, this is not that dog. <laughs> it could be that dog. Uh, well, I had, I had a lot of uh, like the, because to me, when I looked into his eyes, I saw a lot of sadness, not happiness in the way. I'm not sure, is his ears that way because of, for a certain reason, or is, is like, is it always back like that? Do, does one ear always stay down? I don't think so. Jeannie, does one ear of Riley's? No, no they're down? both, they're both up. They both are they're up. Both they're up. very expressive. They're both very expressive. Is you know, depending upon my tone of voice so and what I'm saying. You go ahead and say, you moving. wait and see. Mm -hmm. No? Go ahead. Okay. So he saw about sadness. Yeah, yeah, just in a feeling, like uh, a deep, like longing to, like not complete sadness, just somewhere in the middle and knowing that he has this like capacity for uh, like tremendous happiness, but he feels like very trapped. Like I had a lot of like feeling of fear coming through. Yeah. And um, like the wanting, like I saw him like running in a field of like flowers and just being like his most exuberant self. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of what, and he barks a lot because he's like, because he, he wants to get out of the house and no one's listening. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear that, Jeannie? He barks a lot because he wants to get out of the house and nobody's listening. So this is the first time I've heard. Right, heard. right, got it. <laughs> but yeah, that's what happened. Okay. So Jeannie, do you want to speak to, uh, she said she noticed some sadness with him. Do you want to speak to that or I can speak to it? Yeah, go ahead. Um, okay. But before, before you do, um, yes. so I've known Jolie for five, six years and I've taken her animal communications class. And what she has always said to all of us is it's just like reading a big, you know, part of the different part of the elephant. So there's He's reading no a right different wrong. part of the elephant. Ah, uh, there's n there is no right or wrong. So know that. Yes. For for each of you. So you. So like all of us, we have a multifaceted personality. Yes. Um, and many layers to it. So that's the way it is with our dogs. Yes. So um, you're both right. Yes. You're all right. Well, and I just want to say tell you about Riley and the sadness when it says you were talking. I, I get a set. He's a very happy dog with Jeannie. He has been with her for a year and a half. He was a rescue. He was with another family for about six years. And when I'm with him, I notice an underlying sadness. And, and I felt it so much in my exactly. heart. Exactly. So much. It's there. Mm -hmm. He's happy, 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 happy in his current life. 
he also holds sadness. So you were touching a different part of the elephant. It is right as well. Okay? Yeah? Okay? Yes? Do, do you get different messages depending on your color and oh. your, your vibration? Well, I don't know the answer to that question because my color and vibration I just said, and I don't play around with it to see if I get different. <laughs> I don't know, but I know that different people get different information based on the energy they're exuding. And whether that has to do with the aura color or not, I don't know. That's a good question, but I don't know. But it's different not, people, it's yes. Not just the color, but the actual the words. The words you choose. Versus. It could be. It's, it's a good question, and I don't know. The you didn't hear the question. The question no, was... It, uh, the question was, are you going to get different answers to the questions from the animal depending on the color your aura is set and the vibration your aura is set? Interesting. Yeah. Okay. And so I don't know the answer to that. I haven't mm -hmm. played around with that, but it could be. Mm -hmm. Like you would. Yeah. Could I, be. I wouldn't be surprised. Mm -hmm. Well, just like we talk to girlfriends differently, you know, you tell one girlfriend one thing, you tell another girlfriend another thing because you know how they relate to you. That's right. And we show up differently with different girlfriends too, right? You know, we know this one's really fun loving and we may bring a little more fun loving self and another one's very, you know, dealing with sadness or something. We're going to show up differently. Exactly. One thing, the playfulness did come through. I don't know why, but he said to me, I want to be free like the Taco Bell dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Taco You're not like an old commercial you? with the chup chup. I don't know if that's oh. what he is, but that's what he said to me. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that's, a, a that's hysterical. That's a freedom of important. Yeah. yeah, which I think is true. I think it's true. Jeannie, when he barks, Jeannie will often let him out. You know, mm -hmm. but that's what he wants. He wants to go check things out. And you say nobody's mm -hmm. looking. Sometimes Jeannie's working. She works from home. And so she doesn't always let him out. I mean, what you said sounded like him to me. I just wanted to say that. Anybody else? I just wanted to say one thing. I went in thinking my setting my aura at a particular color and then seconds before I connected with him, it changed the color. Uh huh. Yeah. And and it was like, oh, okay. I guess I need to be this color. Uh huh. And and maybe that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it was easier to connect with him. Maybe at a yeah. different color. Yeah, because it is communication. It's both ways. And so it's connecting and kind of figuring things out. So yeah, yeah something good. Nice. Yeah. So her aura changed colors right before she was getting ready to. That's interesting. So, okay. Yeah. I came up with, he wants to know why are people always so busy and rushing around? <laughs> <laughs> Jeannie. I didn't hear that. Jeannie. I didn't hear that. Can so, you say that again? Um, she want, he wants to know why are people always so busy and rushing around all the time? Uh, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't know the answer to that question, would you? Uh, no, no idea. Yeah, no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Jeannie, well, I'm, I mean, I'm trying to slow down, but you know, it's life, right? We're all busy. Jeannie, oh my God. <laughs> Jeannie's a very, very busy woman. Oh. And so he wants to know, Jeannie, <laughs> that you might, you might sit down and explain that to him sometime. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm busy so that I can work, so I can make money, so I can get, feed him. <laughs> so, you can, so you can make money, so you can feed him, exactly. <laughs> feed him. By the dog food, right? I'm doing it for him. No. Yes. No, oh, he's yeah. funny. So he, he's just like, <laughs> you know, he also values your attention. That's right. Anybody else? I, I mm -hmm. can say that all of you are accurate. Does anybody else say, oh, yeah, I got something similar? Anybody kind of relating to kind of the sense of this dog? Um, I kind of heard that. The dog park was okay, but, you know, he, as everyone said, he doesn't like the confrontations and probably would choose not to be there. 
So it's a mixed, it's a mixed interesting. And maybe he doesn't want it okay. much. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's just hard. It's because it, it, I guess the confrontations probably happen more than not. And it's just not pleasant. Uh-huh. Well, thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, for Barb. Good to know. Yes. Anybody else have something you feel like you really want to share about Riley? We're going to take a little break. Oh, good. I just wanted to, I wanted to ask one. Yes, Kitty. Yes. I got a very strong visual impression of him being held. It was, it was through his eyes, what he was seeing. And it's a military uniform, of, uh, uh, probably an army uniform. So brown, uh, green army uniform with, you could see the, the, the ribbons on right. it. And, and he's, I mean, I could actually, you know, he's describing, but you could also experience the smell of the person and wow. the smell of the wool. Oh, yes. that the oh. was, you guys, it's a person that he had a very strong love bond with oh. and feels very oh. emotionally uh, like he misses this person or something like that. That probably oh. was his family. Jeannie said she didn't know where, why he was relinquished. Maybe if it was some kind of a military family, maybe there was a move overseas or something. I mean, who knows? Yeah, it makes sense. Wow. Well, that was very specific. That's really good. Smells. Yeah. I mean, you know, you get the senses down to the smell, then that's a real communication. So he was really communicating strongly with you, and you got it. Yeah. Thanks. That's was there wonderful. something somebody else wanted to say? So, but curiosity, what is your color? Let's, let's go back to what's your color? Is that a better communication for Riley? You, oh, my color was gold. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Because yeah. that, that's a very specific what you got from him. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. That's you. It's, it's nice when that comes so fully and so completely like that. So good job. I was wondering, is there anything that's been going on with his leg or foot? Jeannie, anything going on with his leg or foot? No, no, okay. not that I know of. No. What, what were you getting? Yeah. Just, I kept, um, he kept saying that his, I don't know if it was his leg or his foot, but one of his front um, limbs that it was, was bothering him sometimes. Okay. I so, don't know. Okay, good to know. know. One of his front that. feet. Yeah. So mm -hmm. something that's mm -hmm. not showing up, you know, in a limp or anything, but it, yeah, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, but Jeannie will check it out. Be, yeah, See if one of them is right. tender. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, he is getting older. So thing. arthritis. Certainly. Be, something show yeah. up as past mm -hmm. life. Is <laughs> so that's mm -hmm. another. Mm -hmm. It can go in lots of different tangents. Yes, so it could be one's healing, you know, on something from a past life. Okay, well, we are going to take a little, let's take about a seven-minute break and come back at about 20 after. We have some other things to do tonight. You guys are all great. That, everybody was writing. Everybody got stuff. I mean, that, this is how easy this is. We're going to switch gears and go to um, Wild animals. And so wild animals are actually very different from domesticated animals. And I see animals, there's a, an evolutionary path that animals um, often go on. And a, not all domesticated animals have been wild animals, but a lot of them have. So a normal path for animals on this planet is uh, to be, be a wild animal. And then after they're a wild animal, then they get tired of being a wild animal, or there's, uh, they've learned everything they could as a wild animal. Um, or they're curious about people, and they decide that they want to be a domesticated animal. And so then you'll see these animals where they're feral cats. You know, a lot of feral cats are transitioning from being a wild animal to a domesticated animal. Same thing with reservation dogs. A lot of reservation dogs have been wild animals. So 
And so sometimes you'll get like a reservation dog that gets rescued. And uh, sometimes they're like, I wasn't quite ready to be a domesticated dog, but here I am. And boy, they're in just a big kind of growth period, you know? And same with feral cats. If you've got a cat that was a feral cat and then they all of a sudden they're inside an indoor cat, they may be having a little adjustment period. So that's just the normal thing that I see. And then there'll be animals who've been a domesticated dog forever. And that would be an old soul that is used to, you know, they know the leash, they know the peeing outside, they know, you know, everything. So um, that's kind of just a normal path. So going to wild animals. Wild animals, uh, just pretty much across the board, have never been domesticated animals. Wild animals start out as wild animals, stay as wild animals. And like I say, every now and then you'll get a domesticated animal that never was a wild animal. Uh, so there's, there aren't that many rules, but that's just a general path. So we're going to talk with wild animals. Wild animals are really different because they tend to really be connected spiritually with the oversoul of the species. So an over, oversoul is like a divine realm of that species. So like turtles have an oversoul of turtles. Uh, bears have an oversoul of bears. And that's the divine aspect. And that's where they go when they get the body. They come from the oversoul and they incarnate into a body. And then when they transition out of that body, they go back as a soul up to the oversoul, to that divine realm. Um, and so we're going to play around a little bit. Well, so and at, like say mountain lions. Um, mountain lions, well, really any animal. Well, fish. You know, has anybody ever seen a school of fish where they alternate at the same time? You know, or seen like a, a a flock of geese and they just all bank. You know, I mean, how do they know how to do that? It's it's because they're really connected still with spirit with that oversoul. They're all connected. They all know where everybody else is. And so like even mountain lions that are very solitary, I would bet my bottom dollar that every mountain lion in the wild knows where every other mountain lion is within a 50 mile radius, whether they can see them or not. They just know, they're just connected. And they're connected with spirit, and they're connected on a realm that we can't see. Um, so wild animals uh, are very different. Where a domesticated animal, as an animal gets more towards being domesticated, they become more individuated. And so they become more like we are. We're individuated. And we're also not quite as connected to spirit because we're so individuated. So we're going to connect with a wild animal, and I'd like you to think of either a wild animal that, is, um, that you choose, or a wild animal may just come to you, but we're going to do a little meditation um, and connect with a wild animal. And see, we connected with a domesticated dog. You got to see, you know, kind of how he is. Now we're going to connect with a wild animal, and you'll get a different sense. Okay. And I've got some questions that we'll ask. So, yes. I know this sounds crazy, but Riley still wants to talk to me. Yeah. And, and I, I can feel his energy. Yes, yes, like, yes. You know. Yeah. And how do you? <laughs> you, say, you say later, honey. Okay. I'm busy. <laughs> he's, yeah. yeah. I'm so excited. I know. To connect. Yes, yes. And he's like, it's over. No, please don't let it be over. I and I, I'm, I'm feeling that from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. say, say, Riley, I mean, you know, when you get home tonight, or maybe even on the way home, but say, Riley, we're going to do another little thing here, and we'll talk later. Okay? <laughs> I know, he's very excited. Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's go within, and I'd like you to find the same, find your grounding cord, find your aura. Say hello to your aura. You can set it in any color, any animal-friendly vibration. It works the same for wild animals.
and just breathe and relax. And again, there's nothing for you to do except to, I'd like you to call in a wild animal that currently has a body. So an incarnated wild animal and either call in one that you choose or you can just let a wild animal show up. And so again, it's really nice manners to say hello from your heart. Animals tend to be very heart-centered. Really appreciate a hello from the heart. So send this wild animal a hello from your heart. And see if you get a response. And you can say, I'd like to talk with you. If the animal came to you, they're probably interested in talking to you. Not all wild animals are. Some wild animals are, aren't very interested in people. But if an animal came to you, they are probably very interested in talking with you. You can just express your interest in talking with them. And the first question I'd like you to ask this animal is, why did you choose this body? Why did you incarnate as this species? And you can make a mental note of the animal's response. And then you can ask, what do you love about your current life? You may get a sense of whether it's a male or female. If not, you can ask. What do you love about your current life? And the last question we're going to have is, do you have a message for me, for me personally? You came to me. Do you have a message for me? And if so, what is it? So make a mental note of the message. You can say thank you to this animal with a body. And it can either go to the side and still be here, or it can go back to wherever it was before it came. And now we're going to, I'd like you each to call in the oversoul of this species that you were just talking with. So this is 
the divine being that oversees this species. And I'd like you to invite it in to come and be before you. So it's going to be in front of you. I'd like you to have a sense of the difference between having a wild animal with a body be here as spirit and sensing the oversoul energy of the entire species. And I'd like you to ask this oversoul, what is your species here to teach? What is your species here to teach? You can ask other questions as well. And when you're ready, you can say thank you to the sober soul for coming and to the animal for coming. And then you can make a note, come out and write about the, the wild animal. Why did, you, why did you choose this body to incarnate? And what do you love about your current life? And what message do you have for me? And then I had you bring in the oversoul of this species. And notice the difference in the energy between the animal with the body and then the oversoul. How that was different. And then asking the oversoul, what is your species here to teach? And you might also notice how you receive the information. Did you receive it? Did you get pictures? Did you hear? Did you feel? Did you know some combination? Was it different than with Riley? Or were you using pretty much the same, the same spiritual senses? It's just interesting to notice. Okay. Yes. Repeat that the first time. Sorry. 
The first three, sure. Um, why did you choose this body to incarnate? What did you love about your current life? What do you love about your current life? And what message did you have? For me? And then with the oversoul, what is your species here to teach? Okay, so we won't have time for everyone to share, but is there anybody who would like to share who has not shared yet? I would. <gasps> Shelly! I have a Speak male, up. oh, I'm sorry, I have a male wolf. A male wolf. To me. Yes. And he chose his current body because he didn't want, the wolf doesn't have as many predators as some of the other animals do. Yes. And he wanted to kind of stay here in this body for a while. So he wanted to choose something that his chances would be better. <laughs> <laughs> what, yes. be the hunter, not the hunted so much? Uh, yes. Okay. And he loves his current body because he can like run around in the, the forest or wherever out in the open and he can get around fast and he just loves running around out there and and um, the message for me was not to be the prey. <laughs> I love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then when I called the oversoul, it was like so big and bright and like a um, not quite as big as some of the divine beings we worked with in the past, but big yeah. and bright. Yes. And he, um, the divine being, which actually I didn't pick up male or female on that, yeah. but just said that the species is here to teach respect. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Oh, I can just feel that. <laughs> wow. Oh, well, wise be. Yeah. Yes. 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 Well, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wants to share? Anybody online? Anybody here? Anybody else? Again. <laughs> <laughs> Unless anybody wants to speak up now. Anybody else? I'm just giving the opportunity. Natalie, you want to share? No? Okay. All right, then go ahead. Nobody's taking it. Okay. I have a question. Um, I can't remember. Masculine energy is more right side, feminine is left, right? Right. Okay. That makes sense. Because I, yeah. Um, actually, that's really all I wanted to ask. Okay, you can share. <laughs> That's really what I wanted to ask. I had an owl come and the presence, like it was similar to you when it came and it was like overpowering, like grounded, peaceful energy. Like I just kind of melted. And it was a huge, like white owl and the one that came in. I actually initially was like, oh, I'm going to see a wolf. And then that didn't happen. An no, owl yeah, actually came in. <laughs> yeah, it traveled over to you. An owl actually came over, which is really interesting. Um, it was like a brown owl, he's like, yeah, look, here's some eyes. Mm -hmm. A lot of like seeing the world from a different perspective because they're nocturnal. Yes, our owl was nocturnal? Yes. Okay, I couldn't remember. I was like, oh, I don't know, that's what's coming through. Um, yeah, they have great night vision. Yes, that's what I was like, ow, I just hit myself in the eye. <laughs> now he's like, see, I'm in the dark. <laughs> yeah, that's it, it was great. It was a great experience. <laughs> Very nice. We actually have another exercise that I would like to do since we have time. <clears throat> this exercise is about how you can bring healing in for your pet or really for any pet. So I'm going to bring the dog back up that, and we're going to offer healing for that pet. But um, But you can do this at home with your own pets. So um, 
<clears throat> Healing with pets, I do it a little differently <laughs> than other people <clears throat> because, because of my work at the Humane Society, really, is that um, I would offer healings to pets and sometimes they didn't want it because they were too overwhelmed, even though they needed it. Mm -hmm but they couldn't take it because it's like, don't even think about it. I am at my max. I can't deal with one other thing. You know, get away from me. Don't give me a healing. And I had a cat say that to me once and I was just so taken aback and I said, okay. And the cat was just like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> and I said, I'm not gonna give you a healing. And the cat's like, really? Oh, thank you. Thank you for respecting, you know, that, yeah, that you can't deal with the healing right now, so I'm not going to give you one. So the cat got a healing by me not giving him a healing. And so that really taught me a lot. So I always, when I do healing work, I bring in, and what I've learned over the years is the easiest way to give an animal a healing, your own pet a healing, is to bring the healing in for yourself. You bring it in for yourself. Anything you do for yourself, your animal's going to want to match you because they're your pet, and they're going to want to be like you. And so <laughs> they may not get a healing right away, but if you continually bring healing energy in for yourself, your animal is going to start to get healing. It just happens. I just see it over and over and over. So I'm going to teach you how to receive a healing. And the healing energy we're going to bring in is very animal friendly. And so animals also uh, usually relate. I bring in a male and a female uh, divine energy. And usually an animal will connect uh, with one of these. You're welcome to bring in another energy. Um, Whatever you connect with divinely, your animal loves you and they're going to feel safe with and they're going to connect with. So if you connect with angels and that's your primary divine connection, bring in angels. If you connect with Mother Earth and nature and the natural world is your primary divine connection, do that. If you connect with crystals, if you connect, it doesn't matter what, how who you connect with, how you connect, what the divine connection is. It could be flowers. Um, but just do whatever feels good for you and your animal will resonate with that, okay? So, uh, but I'm going to just teach you the two divine beings that I work with that are very good at healings and are good at people and animals, and we'll go from there. If you don't like these ones, don't do it. Bring in who you like, okay? <coughs> so you've got freedom to do however. But I'm going to guide it with these two beings. Okay, so go ahead and go within. <coughs> <coughs> and again, we'll start by grounding. Saying hello to your aura, setting your aura to color, just being comfortable in your skin. Breathing, relaxing, there's nothing you need to do. And so uh, the first energy I'm going to ask to come in. So I usually ask the healing energies to kind of hang around the ceiling, just to be here and just be, you know, up around the ceiling, and then I, I'll call them in. And so the first energy I'm going to call in, I'm going to ask it to sit here in the middle of our circle, and for you at home, just ask the energy to come in and be before you. And if you don't like this energy, bring in another divine energy. It feels good for you. But I'm going to call in the divine mother. And her energy I see is uh, pale blue. And so her energy is just going to come in and, and fill the space here in the middle of our circle. And you may sense her presence. And you can, if you want to feel her energy, you can even put your hand out and kind of feel. And she'll come and meet your energy, your hand. And 
uh, you can have a sense of what her energy feels like. And you can just see if it feels comfortable for you. Do you resonate with her energy? Is this an energy you would like to sit with and receive a healing from? And you're not really doing any healing yet. I'm just getting to know that vibration. And now I'm going to ask her vibration to go back around the ceiling and you can feel what the energy feels like without her space, without her energy here. What does just the, the air feel like? And notice the difference when her energy was here and when there's just air. Okay. And then the other energy I work a lot with is St. Francis. And he was, he's the saint of the animals, lived back in the 800s in Italy, St. Francis of Assisi. And, and the Divine Mother, she has lots of different aspects, so I don't give her a specific aspect. She's kind of a general Divine Mother energy, and people have specifics, uh, specific aspects of her that they call in, but I just do a general one. Um, with St. Francis, he works both with people and animals. Uh, just like the Divine Mother, and um, is a very powerful healer and being, and always present, um, loves to come and help in any way. So I see his energy as a um, kind of a lavender energy, and I'm going to ask for him to come in, and the same thing, just to be in the middle of our circle or to be in front of each of you at home. And his energy is obviously male, so it's, it's a different vibration. But the same thing, he has a beautiful heart, and with his energy here, you can reach out to see what his energy feels like, and he'll meet your hand. And also, see if this is an energy you resonate with. And you'd like to receive a healing from. Okay, and then I'm going to ask his energy to go back up around the ceiling. And you can feel what the space feels like without his energy here. And so what I suggest people do to, to give their pet a healing, because that's usually why people do this, um, is I'll suggest you choose a time, you know, five minutes, morning, evening. Often people do it when they're in bed, either right when they wake up or when they go to sleep. Uh, before they go to sleep. So, um, and then you call in one or both of these energies or a divine energy you would like to work with and you ask him to come in around your ceiling and just to be present. And then you ask for a healing. So you need to specifically say, please, you know, address who it is and say, please, give me a healing. And it doesn't necessarily need to be specific. You don't need to say, I want a healing on my big toe, um, although you can. Or you can just say, I feel lousy. I'd like a healing. So you can be general. You can be specific. But you need to ask. And then after you ask, you need to open up and receive. And so you actually need to call that energy into your body. 
And so if you don't feel comfortable doing this tonight, don't. Or call in an energy that, you, that does feel comfortable. You need to resonate with the energy. If you resonated with an energy tonight that you want to call in, call it in. Ask for the healing. Bring it into your body. Feel it. Feel that energy. Welcome it. Open to it. Receive the healing. Your pet's going to be very interested when you do this. They don't even need to be in the same room. And so you can say hello to one of your pets, and I'm going to say hello to this lost dog. And ask, would you like a healing? And so with the pet, you just ask if they want a healing, And you say, if you want a healing, you ask them directly. The pet needs to ask for the healing directly. You don't intervene. You just focus on yourself and your healing. And you offer it to a pet. And they'll take it or not. And they may not. And that's okay. It's there. They know it's there. Meanwhile, you're getting a healing. And your pet's interested. Pet healings can be very brief and very effective. Two or three minutes for a pet healing is a nice healing. And then you can either, sometimes people just go to sleep as they're receiving the healing. I always like to have an agreement with whoever it is that I'm asking a healing from that when the healing is done, they fill me in. Because as they're healing, they're taking energy out often. And so you want to be sure that they have filled you in. So just like when you chose your aura color and you filled your body in with that color, This is kind of the same thing. You want to be filled in. You don't want to have energetic holes in your space. So in your body, your chakras, your aura, when the healing is complete, you want to be filled in. And you can do it yourself, or you can ask them to help, or you could do it both ways. But that's the agreement when the healing is ended. So go ahead and... See yourself filled in or ask for some divine assistance filling you in for the healing to be completed. Thank them. Thank you for coming. Thank you for the healings tonight. And you can check in with your pet and see if it looks like your pet got a healing or not. And again, no judgment around it. Just offering it to them. If you do this every night for a couple weeks, at some point your pet is going to start to receive the healing. It just happens. It's just normal. It's natural. They want to match you. They want to match your energy. Okay, and when you're ready, you can open your eyes and come out. And notice how you're doing. You may be a little tired. <laughs> Healing brings up stuff, and sometimes it's getting late anyway. It's almost <laughs> nine. How was that? Very exciting. Yes. Yeah. And your pet will appreciate this. You'll get a healing. If your pet is healing you a lot, your pet will appreciate you getting healings <laughs> from someone besides your pet. <laughs> But your pet will also appreciate um, you offering the healing, whether they take the healing or not. So, any questions about the healing? 
is something I use a lot. In fact, during readings, I'll often just bring in the healing energy at the beginning of a reading and say, it's here, get a healing if you want. <laughs> and it's a really nice way to do healing. Okay, well, that is everything I wanted to share. We're just coming up at nine o'clock here. Um, I do teach animal communication. I have a class starting in a couple of weeks. So if you're interested in that. But there is a prerequisite. There is a prerequisite, but you can do it as a download. Yeah, there's a, a class that uh, you need to take before this one on how to heal yourself. Um, and if anybody wants to uh, receive any other uh, notifications from me, you can sign up. <coughs> and I want to thank each of you for coming tonight. I really appreciate you guys all being so interested in animal communication. It's so simple. And I, I predict that in another 20 years, it will be the most normal thing on the planet, where people will just know that it's real and be practicing it more because it's a natural human gift. And in olden times, it used to be more normal than it is. <laughs> so we're kind of regaining something that is actually just a very normal human. Um, uh, in, Can you talk a little bit about any services you with yeah, so I do animal communication sessions that range anything from why is my dog barking so much to why is my cat peeing outside the litter box to I just want to know what's going on. Some, something's up with my pet and I don't know, but they seem different. Um, end of life issues, I do a lot of that. Uh, somebody who maybe is um, thinking, maybe has a dog and they're thinking of getting a cat and they want to choose the right, the right one or see if their dog wants a cat or, you know, um, you know, anything people have questions about with their pets, I go and I'm their interpreter. Is that a couple sessions? Kind of it's usually one. I really try to just get it all done in one, everything we can do. And then every now and then it'll be like, we really need another session, you know? And so I may suggest it, but I really try to just have it be whatever we can do. And that's, that's it. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Well, I don't want to keep you guys. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Gloria.